Hey guys, welcome back to Seller Sessions. Today I bring back Taylor Benterud. How are you doing, Taylor? You all right? Good. How are you doing? Yeah, all good. So, going straight into things, as you're Mr. AMS, let's talk, uh, what's the latest updates going on in terms of new interface? Should we go into that first? Yeah. So, uh, the biggest update recently was the new UI user interface that was released on AMS. Um, uh, did you see it personally? Have you seen it I, yet? I haven't had a chance to check it out. I've been so flat out. No. No, you're good. <laughs> so it's not everybody has access to it. About 80% of our accounts have access to it now. So if you're missing it, it's totally fine. You're going to get it probably in the next like one to two weeks. Um, basically, it's, it's the same as Seller Central in the sense that you have that, that you know, the graph where you can yeah. select the five metrics, whichever ones you want to look at. Um, that was a huge difference. Obviously the previous AMS UI really sucked. It was a huge problem. And then also on the keyword level. So if you click into a campaign, you also have that graph, which is the same as seller central. When you click in, you can see the graph, you can search the keywords so that you can actually see the spend sales, a cost of a keyword over time, which is like a dream come true for me. <laughs> it would have been nice two years ago, but it's okay. They're making improvements. Um, and the biggest thing out of all of it, I, I would Hold say, is, so you're saying you, you can plot a cost over time is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. You can see a cost over mean, time. It's always been bad AMS, isn't it? In terms yeah, of yeah. the interface, but yeah, that's good. Um, the biggest thing is bulk operations yeah. and it's only available for headline search ads, mm -hmm. not for product display ads. So, the, the reason why it's so powerful is just because the AMS management platform pretty much sucks. I mean, you can't go in and manually change bids. I think I said this on the last show, but like manual bid changing is dead. Yeah. I, I really don't like people that do that unless it's for your main keywords that you want to have a high bid for. Like if there's five or six keywords, you know, that are just, you want to blast hundred percent of costs on because it's the you know key phrase for a headline ad. That's fine. Um, but you can go into the bulk operations, check it out. It's the same as seller central's version. If that scares the shit out of you, uh, sorry for my language, but That's it right. shouldn't because it's really, really easy. You just need to go in and look at, uh, the bulk file and how to use it. And I would say for anybody that's like a total, like Excel, they get like really like anxious when they see it and they're like, this is too much for me. If you hire somebody on onlinejobs.ph or what are the other outsource sites like, uh, Upwork, um, any of these sites where you, yeah, Fiverr, you can find somebody that's like a macro Excel VBA expert, literally search VBA expert or macro Excel expert. And they, you can give them the bulk operations sheet. This is what I did. <laughs> and I was like, these are the formulas we use in our, you know, regular software with our bots because we, we never um, use the API in our software. And I said, can you apply this into this bulk operations and just create a simple macro so that you download the bulk file, you apply five formulas and it changes all the bids. And he did it in like three days. Wow. It was just like, it was so easy for him. He was like, yeah, this is really easy. So if it scares you go to Fiverr, it'll cost you 50 bucks. You could build your own bid management system and you could literally just download the bulk file, run the macro, have all the bids changed based on whatever formulas you want, upload it and you're done twice a week. So it's really, really legendary. So quick question there. In terms of when you're setting your clients, obviously you're working off their margins to determine what A costs that you can work to. Yeah. Yeah. So where what happens with say you've got a certain set of keywords that are out of reach of you know, they're they sit in a higher tier of A costs outside the margins of your clients. Right. So when you're bidding, what do you do with say when there is no impressions, but you can't go too high because you've got to set the ratio per clicks to conversion and stuff. How do you manage that? So for keywords that have very low impressions, no clicks, but you want to raise the bid on them to get impressions. Yeah. In order to raise the bid, you can uh -huh. raise the bid, but then that might, that might exceed the clients. Yeah. So um, calculations for their margins for ACOS. Really, really counterintuitive approach to it. So, so yeah. we have, uh, an AST, it's called an average spending threshold. Yeah. And we take a weighted average margin. So let's say you sell 10 SKUs, right? And your weighted average profit margin percentage is about 30%. Mm -hmm. And so we take like, the, so imagine this, there's two columns. There's this, there's like the sale price of the product. Yeah. Okay. And then there's their actual total revenue for that SKU in the last 30 days. So we would take a weighted average with these two. 
and the margin, of course, because we need to calculate the margin and we calculate the weighted average margin. So let's say your weighted average margin for your account is, is like $5. Mm-hmm. So on average for all of your products, you profit about $5 after cost of goods sold, Amazon fees, et cetera. Right? Yeah. So we take an account level weighted mar- margin. It's not ah, product okay. level because yeah. in EMS in the headline ads, you don't know which product converts. They don't tell you that. Yeah, so we do, we do account level right now. Um, so you have this $5 metric. Let's say a keyword bid is at $3. That's already a pretty high bid because two clicks at $3 puts you above your margin, right? Yeah. So we actually use this formula where it's like, okay, if the keyword has zero clicks or zero impressions, you raise the bid by 25% once a week until it gets the clicks. Yeah. And it'll go as high as $9. We actually really don't care. If it goes to $9 and it gets a click and it's a $3 click, it'll get dropped back down immediately. But at least we know that's how far we had to push it. And then the automation automatically will bring it down. So we're willing to go that high just because it rarely ever does. I think Mm -hmm. a lot of people think about that. They're like, that's really scary. But it's like, no, like less than 1% of the time it does. And even if it does, it gets dropped down like immediately. So we look at that AST and then we raise the, the, we just basically raise the, the bids around that. And I don't know if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah, makes total sense. So do you think that you'll get to a stage where you literally can do it on a per racing level? level? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. So we, you can already do that on the product display ad level. Yeah. Right? Um, and what we're moving towards is the campaign level because you can still do it at the campaign level, right? Mm-hmm. Like account level is really it's not that great. Like I think it might sound cool, but like it's not that great. So what we're going to have is basically in the bulk op, every campaign has its specific record ID for anybody that doesn't know what that is. It's like a simple, uh, what would you call it? Like way that Amazon recognizes each campaign is unique. Yes. 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 Unique campaign ID. Yeah. Unique campaign campaign ID. And so with every unique campaign ID, there will be um, a spending threshold per keyword. So like an average spending threshold, an AST per campaign. And all that's saying is in this particular campaign for these products, I'm willing to spend up to $8 before the bid gets dropped on any keyword. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we start our bids pretty aggressively and then we have this AST. So no bids get changed. Like the bids will never get dropped unless it spends up to that margin level because we're willing to spend up to the margin because you never know like you know it might hit just above the margin then it gets a sale and all of a sudden it's break even yeah so we're willing to spend up to that margin and i think a lot of the tools out there today kind of follow that same principle um but i never really got that principle from them we kind of just built it ourselves (laughs) what you in terms what do you do in terms of managing large sets of variations I mean, how are you deploy no style campaigns as opposed to a, a single product? So if um, we, have, we, have, we have a client that sells, well, I, I, rain boots. I mean, it's a generic product. You can go and sell yeah. it. <laughs> it's, good luck. But uh, he sells rain boots and there's, let's say there's like, tw- there's 12 different variations and they're different patterns, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's really different. So what we do is like in the headline ad, since we're only allowed four slots, the main image and then the other three, we go into the business report and for that parent ASIN, we look for the child that has the highest unit session percentages. Yeah. Yeah. And, and obviously we correlate that with sales because it might have, you know, a hundred dollars in sales on one and 90% unit session percentage. But we look at, we basically filter by that parent ASIN that has 12 variations. Then we order the sales in the business report greatest to least. And then we look at the sales compared to the unit session percentage and we pick the top three products. If that makes sense. Yeah. And then we put the rest in the landing page. I don't know if that makes sense. So that's how we, we literally just look at the best converting ones because they're proven to convert. Cool. What else is new? Um, they had like when the UI came out and I, I spoke to the rep that we deal with about this and he wasn't sure. But they had the automated bidding thing. I, it, to me, it's not of no interest whatsoever. But if anybody really uses Amazon's automated bidding and sponsored products, um, where it's like the little rule thing you can do, where it's like whatever. They had that in the headline ads, and then they got rid of it the second day, which was really weird. And I had a bunch of people on LinkedIn like DM me, and they asked me, like, where is it? And so uh, it, maybe it'll come out. I don't know. I rep didn't know for sure. Um, other than that, nothing else is really that new. We, we're, we've just been spending a ton of time on trying to automate the bid management and, yeah. and in the API because 
we've been using a bot for almost a year and a half. Then the bulk operations came out a week and a half ago. And it's like, okay, we got to get into the API because it's just like, we've been really procrastinating. It makes, it makes life easier once you've got access to the API. It it's, makes life so much easier where you can automate that way. Yeah. And if they had the bulk operations for the product display ads, I would probably procrastinate further on getting into the API because the bulk op is so good. Yeah. So if you're thinking, if you're thinking, well, I, I'm just going to get into the API, the bulk operations isn't worth it. I would say that's the wrong approach. I would say the, the proper approach is to master your formulas in the bulk operations, yeah. get some good formulas that you feel really work for you and then p plug into the API and you can streamline that even further. Yeah. Um, Amazon, dude, I don't know. Have you read, uh, the, the book by John Rossman, The Amazon Way. No. IoT on things, the internet of things. Okay, so John Rossman's the guy who launched the third party fulfillment program on Amazon. Gotcha, yeah. yeah. So Jeff Bezos hired, hired this guy. He's like, I wanna launch this so anybody could sell on Amazon. So everybody that's listening to this, this is the guy that made it possible. And uh, he wrote this book on the internet of things and how Amazon runs. It's the most, I would say it's the most phenomenal book I've ever read in my entire life ever because Amazon's one of the best companies in the world and it's the principles they use to build their company. And one of them is called instrumentation, which is automating things. So like every team in Amazon is dedicated to one thing. And one of the principles is called instrumentation, which is automating things. And that's why it's important to go to the bulk operations. So everybody starts out manually changing bids and most people stay there. And that's so, that's so bad. Like you should continuously progress. I understand there's other parts of their businesses, but you should go from manual bid changing to bulk operations and then to the API. And so then, you know, you can apply that area of instrumentation to other areas of your business, such as product sourcing. How do you automate that? And, and that's a tough one, but how do you automate that? You know, listing, building, et cetera. And it just really changed my perspective on things. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, project management. We were talking off call. Yeah. Give us a rundown. You use uh, Trello and what was the other one? Lucid chart. Cool. So, Break that out. Why, why are you using it? Because I know that you're, the students on your, your course that you've got with Sean, yeah. you're, you're covering it there, in there, aren't you, in terms of how you're going to structure campaigns, project management. So what are you using it for so the listeners understand? Yeah, so Trello, sorry, um, Lucidchart is simply like a flowchart software where you can build flowcharts. I'm more of a visual, visual learner. Yeah. And I would argue that everybody learns better visually with text and video. Like that combination of three things, Chris Drucker talks about it, is like deadly for learning. What is, it? So, video, what is it? It's auditory, kinesthetic, and visual learning, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, you got it. You know the legit words. I didn't remember <laughs> those ones. Well, I used but to be a teacher, so yeah. Legendary. Well, so we use Lucidchart because we have text in the flowchart boxes, and then there's a legend at the top that, it, that has a video in it where people can watch the video and then the video goes through the flow chart on how to do that exact SOP click by click. So you go for the, through the video first, you understand the flow chart and then you repeat the SOP and you can do the, the process again and again. And then if they ever forget the SOP, they can go back to the video and it's this continuous cycle where nobody has any more errors because everything is SOP and to change it, to change your system is really simple. Like to understand, um, a break in your chain if something really goes wrong in the process of your PPC We just go into the lucid chart. We look at our flow charts. We say oh, okay We need to change this we edit it out and change it So we pair lucid chart with Trello because Trello is an actual project management system mm -hmm. software and Basically Trello is just each step in the flow chart is a column in Trello if that makes sense so if the flow chart has nine major pieces and each piece has its own SOP video you know, in Trello, there's going to be the nine columns where you have the thing and you drag it to the next one and the next one and the next one. So once you finish the keyword research, then you go in and you write the headline ads and then you build the landing pages. And these are just, you know, some of the steps that we use. And when I implemented this, dude, it, it just pretty much, I had like 90% more time. Like it reduced communication in Slack by 90%. My team, like the messages just dropped like a ridiculous amount. So building a PM system is probably one of the best things you could possibly do for your, yeah. for your business period in all aspects of your business. And I think a lot of people really don't do that. We work with seven, eight figure sellers, even the eight figure sellers we deal with, 
they're dying for like a PM system. And I think everybody's looking for this amazing tool that's going to do it for them. And I did that for about a year until I just decided I'm just going to like build the SOPs in a flow chart and use that. And that was it. It just automated everything. So makes sense. Um, bit late to the game now. We've me and Sean have discussed it on the show. Uh, but how did you get on with Prime Day? Obviously, it's been a while. Did you uh, yeah. s- see much success? The the yeah, like the the weirdest thing we saw was that the I think it was the day before Prime Day, or it was the first day of Prime Day. The spend doubled across every account, but the sales didn't move at all. And then the next day, the the spend came down a bit, but the sales went up huge and you saw the spike and it was so weird because um last year was not like that at all like zero so that was the weirdest thing the, the, yeah we saw a sales boost it wasn't anything out of this world um it was about a double like 2.5x i would say average is probably 2x when we looked at all the accounts combined um a cost was a little bit lower nothing yeah. really that crazy i mean our average a cost across all the accounts is about 22 percent still that's good. So what are you doing, obviously, in terms of discovery, when you're bringing on new clients or clients are dropping new products, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. what are you doing in terms of preparation for discovery campaigns? Because obviously, it's nice having a very low A cost like what you've got. That yeah. only tells you one side of the story. But what mm-hmm. happens when you need to build upon uh, mm-hmm. the research to find new keywords and search terms and stuff like that? What's your mm-hmm. approach there? Yeah, so... Generally, if it's a new product or even an exist, like if it's a new product, we make sure the client builds the title properly. Like if they have a shit listing and their title it sucks, we're going to tell them right away because in the keyword research process, having a good title is really foundational because we use the title for pretty much everything. Yeah. And we'll go yeah. and look at the competitor's titles if theirs sucks and then we'll tell them, hey, you're missing three major keywords that we found that have you know 75,000 searches a month estimated. Etc. So we really just look at the title. We find what those seed terms are. Yeah. Really good example is like um, baby rain boots. Mm-hmm. This is like a, a keyword that's very difficult or a product that's very difficult to do keyword research for because you can't just bid on the word rain boots because then you're going to cover adult rain boots and it's going to convert terribly, etc. And there's no negative keywords in AMS. So you have to be very fine tuned. So what we do is like, okay, if, the, if we find the main seed keyword that describes the product, for example, with testosterone booster, it would be testosterone booster. Usually what the product's name is, is what the main seed keyword is. So with yeah. baby rain boots, you can find synonyms to the word baby. Mm-hmm. You can find synonyms to the word rain, and you can find synonyms to the word boots. So we'll Google synonyms to the word rain, boots, and baby. And then we'll find, okay, it could be toddler rain boots. It could be rug rat rain boots. It could be rug rat water boots. It could be what rug rat water shoes. And then we interchange the synonym keywords with mergewords.com, which is like a tool that just kind of interchanges columns of words. And that's how we find all of our C keywords is we just, we find that. So you, one. Is it concatenation where you're using it's individual words to bring them back to? Yeah. You got it. And then our VAs, they do all of this, but they take those weird words like water shoes, which when I did the presentation in Hong Kong, like I, I talked about this and water shoes is like a keyword I thought would never really have um, search volume. It has like 13 or 25,000 searches a month and there was no headline ads showing for it. Yep. And like, I was like, look at this, like this is insane. And so we obviously started bidding on the keyword and it performed really well. And so in doing this process, you find a lot more unique, weird keywords that most people wouldn't think of because you go through this synonyms process and you go through this concatenation process, with, which 99% of sellers don't do. Mm-hmm. So even when we launch the keyword research for a new product, generally the A cost ends up being pretty decent um, for most of our clients because, I mean, we hand select our clients really well and the products they launch are normally really good. So that also helps. That's kind of the main thing. But um, yeah, that, that, that's what we end up doing. That's kind of our main keyword research strategy. Cool. And from there, continuous search term pulling, running through the loop of constant, like, <laughs> never-ending keywords. Hmm. Cool. So is there any, uh, anything else you want to add before we go? I don't think so. Biggest thing is um, check out that bulk operations, get somebody that knows Excel, and freaking do it, because I don't think there's any softwares on AMS right now at least for the bid management side of things, for the headline ads or product display ads. Yeah. And you should do it yourself and it'll cost you like a hundred bucks. Yeah. Makes total sense. Um, how can people reach you? What you got coming up, et cetera? 
Um, they can just add me on Facebook, Taylor Bentrude, and they can message me there. In terms of what's coming up, nothing. We're not going to do any more speaking. Dude, I'm, I'm only doing podcasts with you. That's it. I told the shop, I was like, dude, we're not, we're not doing podcasts anywhere. Um, and that's it. We're just working on our, on our, on our training program and building so, software. Yeah. How do people reach the training program? Yeah. So they can check it out. PPC, AMS, accelerator.com. And uh, if they have more questions on it, they can add us on Facebook myself or Sean. Sounds good guys. Thank you for joining us today. Taylor, thank you for joining us. If this is your first time, don't forget to hit the subscribe and I'll see you again in the next few days. Take care.